bem. Hey. Hey, what's up, Lauren? How we doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I apologize for the lateness. I actually just got back from Walmart. I was trying to hurry up and get back here. I was like, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, uh, you <laughs> are all good. No worries at all. Did you get anything good? I did. I had, I had to pick up um, some drinks because, uh, you know, I had food in there, but I didn't have nothing to drink. So I was like, let me go, <laughs> let me go get some. Uh, I'm an apple juice connoisseur. So I love. OK. Uh, for some reason, I just I love it. Uh, so that's no, I feel that I had I broke my wrist last year and had surgery. And for some reason, when I had my surgery, I had no appetite. But I drink like a gallon of apple juice every yeah. single day. I was like, yes. this is the, yes. <laughs> the only thing. 98 cents. You cannot beat the price. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I got three of those. Yes. I and love it. My Mountain Dew. So I got this too for the interview. So yes. Um, We're all set. But yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you for allocating your time to me. I really do appreciate it. Um, I also wanted to ask thank you, uh, before I started peppering you with questions, um, how are you and your family doing during the pandemic time? Oh, thanks for asking. We're all good. I'm actually home. I live in Chicago, but I'm home in Michigan at my parents' house. And I've been here for like two months now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just trying to get out of the city. It's like being in the city is just so horrible right now, at least for me. And I have a puppy. So I'm like just hanging here. But it's nice because I've actually gotten to spend everybody's stayed healthy and I've gotten to spend so much more time with them than like I ever would have. So yeah, kind yeah. of enjoying it. How about yours? Uh, well, my dad is in upstate New York. I typically call on him at least twice a week, check up on him, see how he's doing with my stepmom and my little brother up there. And then my mom is actually, um, she's about 45, 50 minutes away from me. And my mom, my aunt, my uncle, they all live in the Where house. Where are you again? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, that's what I thought. Yeah, so uh, I call them and check up on them as well. If they need anything, they know just to hit me up, and I'll come. I'll come knocking. I'll come uh, delivering. So that's, that's nice. Cool. That's like when I went to Michigan, it was the same deal, like forty minutes. So it's nice being able to be close like that, especially Absolutely. especially yeah. during this. I can imagine. So before I before I you know we start the questions, I want to tell you a little bit about myself get you a little bit more in tune with who okay. I am. And then also let you know why yes. I picked you out um, and wanted to talk to okay. you. So my name is Chris, obviously, um, and I'm a senior in college, um, majoring in journalism and emerging media. And um, I'm a staff writer for our magazine, our school magazine. And I'm also a sports radio co-host. We have a show called The Swoop that we uh, do midday, uh, weekday, uh, midday, midweek, Wednesday, two to four. Uh, so we do that. Um, I also uh, okay. covered high school football as a sports writer, a sports correspondent for different publications around here in the county. Um, I did 11 games. And so I got a lot of experience well, of interviewing players and coaches, nice. writing recaps. Um, I'm going to be doing high school basketball as well uh, this next month coming up in the playoffs. So I'm going to get more experience in sports writing. That's probably predominantly what I've been doing in sports writing. Uh, but I want to be a triple threat. I want to be a sports writer, uh, broadcaster, and I want to be a reporter. Uh, and then that's where you come in. So I saw <laughs> that you cover uh, the Michigan Wolverine. Um, and I saw a couple of your reels. I was like, wow, she does a really great job. And I saw her on <laughs> Twitter. You. I saw you on Twitter. No, you're welcome. I saw you on Twitter, and I was like, let me just send a message. 
You know, um, of course, I'm always a little nervous sending messages to people. I'm not naturally a nervous guy. I promise you I'm not. <laughs> but, you know, you never want to bother anybody, especially when you don't know them. <laughs> you like them I feel you. Like, who the hell is this person? <laughs> but, no, I feel you. I've been in your shoes and did the exact same thing, what you're doing now. And that, I mean, I graduated in 2019. So, like, I'm only a year and a half older than you. But, um, yeah, I see, I like what you're saying because I actually, I mean, I didn't get started in sports until really like my sophomore year of college, like in terms of broadcasting, like that's, yeah. I wanted to go to med school, like I, or law school. I was like, so on a different path. Um, but like I studied sports psychology and neuroscience. So I was like more like the medical thing and then got into it, but I did a similar thing at Michigan. I didn't do radio, but we had, um, a like student run TV network. Um, so I started there and I started just like anchoring or reporting and then anchoring. And then I started producing um, for my last couple of years. So that's how I started with Michigan basketball, um, which is like, I guess that that's the one thing is like, I did so much in college, but it's such a, you're in such a valuable spot because you're surrounded by like sports teams at school. There's high school sports. Like you're just like, and people are so willing to help you as well. And you have great access. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I, yeah, I did a similar thing. So I started with Michigan basketball for the school and then um, started working at Fox Sports Detroit freelancing and I did digital and social media there. So then I started getting into the pros with the Pistons, Tigers and Red Wings, which was like great for networking um learned a lot but none of it it was it was more social media it wasn't really um like journalistic um and then I was there for like a year and a half and then I moved to Chicago and did production for a daytime talk show which is like honestly it was one of the things where I was like this is a great experience I learned so much about like a live TV production and everything like that. I had some with like, I worked on the Fox broadcast, but for like in, in studio and not like at game type thing. Yeah. But honestly, I hated it. I was like, this is like, <laughs> I like they're sitting here talking about like top 10 Valentine's day gifts for like your dog. And I'm like, this is like the stupidest wow. thing ever. Um, yeah. So then I was like, I'm, done with uh tv that's not sports um kind of refocused I started a podcast um which was great okay. and then ended up at SI and so now I'm co-publishing for West Virginia which is like honestly been a blessing of COVID and this is something I would tell you too is like right now you are we used to like as like reporters used to be limited to like covering teams within like our geographical region right um I cover West Virginia so like that's like my like technical full-time job um where I spend most of my time but I'm not on site there like but and then I uh freelance for Michigan okay Sports Illustrated so same with Illinois and Indiana um which is cool because you can do a lot of different things and I just have the luxury of being in Michigan and being able to stay at home and go to games. And I just miss that. So that's what I've been doing. Um, so that's kind of like my background. Um, but I definitely got started. Like you seem like you're really ahead of the game, especially with um, covering a lot of high school sports. Like that's great. And that's something that I think like that's an experience I didn't have. Um, and it's such a low pressure place to get really good reps. Um, and that's definitely something that's super valuable. Like when you're applying for jobs that like people will ask if you did. So I appreciate that. Sounds really like you're on a good track. Thank you. I do. I appreciate that. Um, so you kind of went into like what made you or kind of inspired you as far as to be a reporter. Uh, so my next question is, is that, um, what has been the most challenging uh, thing about this industry so far in your, in your young career? What has been the most rewarding? Oh gosh, that is such a good question. Um, so simple, but so good. Um, I think the most challenging thing is this industry really weeds you out 
Like it is so, it is so much fun, but it is so challenging and you have to work your ass off to get like a little reward. So I think that's honestly kind of been both. Like there are times where like, if you go down a stretch and like I, when COVID hit and I had like five gigs for like in-game hosting team reporting, like all of this stuff lined up and then they all got canceled. And I think that it's, it for sure weeds people out. And like, I've had so many friends who did this stuff in college and like have corporate America jobs now. And like, I know a good amount of girls who are older and they were reporters or, or men too, but they were reporters. And then they were like, I, this is too, it's such a hustle. Um, and I think that's the challenge. Like you don't make a lot of money. Um, you, right, right. you go to work when people, if you are working in sports, sports happen as a people's pastime. So you're going to work when everybody else is off work. Right. Um, but that's also like wonderful. Like we get to go to work and it's literally like what people pay to do for fun. Um, however, like you have to, at least what I learned for myself in this challenge, like there are for sure times where you doubt yourself and especially on social media and everybody puts their best moments on social media and you look at people, you're like, oh my God, they're so good. Or, you know, they're covering this or doing that. Right. Um, it's really hard not to like compare yourself and feel like you're not doing enough. Um, so I think the biggest challenge is like, for sure, mental. It's like, like, I love the hours. I love like a weird, wacky schedule and um, things like that. And I, I don't, I'm not very like money driven. I'm more like happiness driven. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's been the biggest reward for me, I think, is like, I have found, especially after being out of college and most of my friends, except for my reporting friends are just like in normal corporate America, like nine to five. Um, I've noticed, especially over the last couple of months and like during quarantine, when I've just like spent more time with people, uh, right, seeing what right. they're doing, I've noticed how much, how different my friends in this field are compared to others in terms of like being highly motivated and super passionate. Right. Um, like, I don't really feel like even my, I live with my best friend in Chicago, like since kindergarten and she's like a packaging engineer. And she tells me all the time, she's like, I, and she knows like, I don't make that much money. Like I work, you know, I'm like hustling, trying to find jobs, oh, yeah. but, oh, yeah. but she's always telling me, she's like, it's so hard watching you work because like, it makes me realize how not passionate about my job you know, I am and like, I have something regular and I'm watching right. you. And so that, that's, I. Right. Like make some money. It's like, I'm trying to go to work, but like, I'm also like just doing something that's fun. So right. Uh, that's probably a long way to put it, but I think as you get older, the glamour of it, like it's definitely a glamorous field in a way, you know, to the public eye, but because it's so fun, it's like, who doesn't want to do that as a job? Um, you can enjoy that, but like you have to work so hard to get to the point where you enjoy that. So that's yeah. kind of like the, the dynamic you're playing with is like, I see see the light at the end of the tunnel, but like this tunnel's really long, Right. but you know, you'll get there. So yeah. that's, it, it goes both ways. I like that. I really do. You know, a lot of what you said kind of resonated with me, especially when you start talking about um, the, the friends. Uh, there are um, instances where, you know, I have uh, friends that say, Hey, Chris, you know, Hey man, let's go out to the bar, man. Let's have a good time. And it's like, yeah bro, I can't do that because, you know, I'm doing something, I'm doing Zoom. I'm talking to people yeah. or I'm, I got to go cover a game or I got to do this. Sure. Or, you know what I mean? So, and then they're like, well, why don't you just come afterwards? I'm like, bro, I got to write this, or I got a deadline. I got to get this article in yeah. by a certain time. So I, I don't know when I'm going to be done. I mean, I'm, I'm, if y'all still there, it's cool. Because I live by the yeah. mantra, uh, Lauren, of work hard, play hard. And I definitely like I'm to work <laughs> hard, and I definitely like to play hard. I do. Um, 
you know, just, just Atlanta. So, so we definitely like to go out and have a good time. And I um, was born in Chicago, so I'm very familiar with Chicago as well. Um, but that resonated yeah. for sure uh, about the friends. Um, when? Ha- go ahead. No, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to add on that, like, that's the same thing I did when I was my senior year of college. I I was enrolled in two schools, like, I had two majors and a minor, like, I took 22 credits every semester, plus summer classes, so yeah. literally every day, seen, even senior year, when most of my friends were, like, only part-time or had online classes, like, it was a joke, like, I had class from eight to four every day, yeah. and I would, like, go home, get ready, drive an hour down to Detroit, for like a 6 p.m. basketball game, be there till nine. Then yeah. by the time post game show was over, like I'll get home at 1 a.m. and then sometimes like go straight to the bar. And like, you can do it all, but like you have Man. to take care of yourself. Like I very much balance it by like, for example, I got home at like 1 a.m. last night from a basketball game. And then today, like I've been just super lazy, like physically, but like working on my computer. So like right. you kind of like, at least for me, I like sprint and then like recover <laughs> and then like sprint. And you kind of got to be able to do that, but sustain it, you know? Yes. Um, and, and good thing that we, we are, you know, young enough to do that, which is great. And like I said, I love to, I love to make people smile, love to make, love to make people laugh. Uh, I, my schedule is kind of crazy and, and you talked about schedules a little bit. Um, I work full time for the lottery right now. Uh, so I work overnight from nine to nine. I work 84 hours every two weeks. I have seven classes, like you said, so I have 21 credit hours this semester. Uh, I do a part-time job as well, doing event security at our school while I do, um, uh, sports games. So I do event security doing that. And I told you about me staff writing and I also said about the radio show. So for me, yeah. I don't mind being busy. I don't mind doing different things. I really don't. I love it. Um, and it's also taught me about time management, though, because all those skills really teach you that, wow, you really need to, like, know when to slow down, know when to speed mm-hmm. up, know when to be a go-getter, but also know when to be lazy. <laughs> know when yeah, to have a day to exactly. <laughs> right? So it's real. And and I, I echo all those sentiments that you said that you was doing senior year. That's exactly what I want to do. Um, if I hadn't said it, I graduate in July. I have four classes left after this semester. Okay. So I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. That's for sure. Um, but speaking on that, that's a great segue to this next question, which is, um, has there ever been a moment or a time in your life where you sat up and you said, I no longer wanted to be in the sports media industry? And if so, how did you exhibit the resiliency to not quit? <laughs> I feel like, um, the thought has definitely crossed my mind. Like, I feel like after every milestone, when I kind of like plateaued and I'm trying to get to the next level and and not getting there, like, for example, applying for jobs straight out of college, I set the bar super high. I was like, I'm going to go, you know, big city, get big job, you know, like do, do the whole thing right (laughs) right away. And, and then I had this like slap in the face to wake up. That was like, (laughs) <laughs> you're not good enough yet like you need to right. put more work and and all those times where it's like things are like within reach I feel like but just not quite getting there or like for example I um like when COVID hit I was like okay all my jobs literally just like poofed into the thin air <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right and obviously that's like a different type of situation that like hopefully will be over with soon um but I feel like I feel like it's so it is so competitive and I'm very very competitive with I want to say not so much with other people mostly with myself um yeah but also like with jobs like like I want to be the best you know what I mean like I'm competitive with myself and if that means I have to beat out other people for a job that's what I'm going to compete for um so I feel like when you have that mentality like this is something like for example sorry this is a hard question to answer just because I feel like I've felt that way so many times right but I've always kept in the back of my head and like always know how happy I you know am working for example I I started working with a talent coach in um September or August um and she she kicks my ass like once a week 
literally will spend an hour tearing apart one minute of footage. And it is so like nitpicky and to the point. And like, there are times where I hang up with her and I'm just sitting here like, holy, I didn't even know that right. there were, there was a way to say that wrong. <laughs> or, right, you know. right. Um, and so I, but I've improved so much from that. And like, you have to be able to do that to take, take feedback and not take it to heart. But I had, um, not yesterday, but the last Michigan game, I think it was like Thursday or Friday or something last week. Right. I was like trying to talk and do my report. And for some reason, like I just could not talk. I was like, so in my head, it was so hard. I did like 10 takes for like a 30 second like it was nothing. I was like, why can't I do this? And even when I drove home, like I was so mad and watched the footage and was like, just like, why, you know, like right. I shouldn't be doing this. And right. I'm like, oh my God, like, do I want to be this stressed out all the time? Like, am I ever going to be good enough? Like there's like those questions always come up, but I even tweeted, this is like, it's like, I'm still wondering the right answer to figure it out. Um, yeah. But after that game, I even tweeted, I was like, question for like any reporters like what do you do if like words are hard and like to get out of your head and right I got like a good amount of like replies to it and this guy that worked at works he's the PA announcer for Michigan basketball he's just like you know why you're there you know you love it like you know that's where you belong like do these things and and I think you just have to remember that like we are so lucky to like I'm like, I've put in this much work. I'm not quitting now. <laughs> right, right. I, I think that's how I do it. But, but I think that another big part of the resiliency, resi resiliency, um, as we talked about earlier is looking around at my friends and my family and like everybody like has great jobs. Like, you know, my brother is successful. My parents are successful, but I look at them and like what they're doing for work and how they loathe doing it. And then I'm like, I like can't sleep at night right. before work because I'm you so love excited. What you do. And yeah. And that is very rare, I think, especially now. I think people settle and you have to not do that because like the reward is so worth it. And also to continuously like challenge yourself and like it's it's worth it. Like I've found that all those times that I thought about quitting once I got through that mindset, then right. like I came out like even better, you know, which is so cliche, but it's so true. No, I like that. I really do. And and once again, you know, what resonated with me with what you said right there in the beginning was, you know, you want to be the best. And sometimes people say, you know, sometimes people look at you and, you know, they like, what you mean? You want to everybody want to be the best at what they want to do. Everybody wants to do. But listen. I'm not competing with you. I'm not competing against you. I'm competing with myself. And right. I'm competing with myself because I know what I can do. I don't worry about what the next person or the next woman or the next man can do. Because in my mind, I feel like if you don't choose me, you're just making a big damn mistake <laughs> at the end of the day. Because I'm going to show you if you don't choose me, this network don't choose me, this network don't choose me. All I need is one yes. And I'll right. show you why. I'm going to be, and that's the mindset I have too. And I love that. I love when you said that because I feel the same damn way. I really Yeah, do. and you've got to, you've got to. And it's like, not, if you uh, aren't going to believe in your work and right. your drive, then nobody else is, especially Absolutely, here. absolutely. So that definitely resonated with me, what you said that. Um, I also understand about, uh, like you said, going back to the family and to the friends, is that you want to do something that you love to do. And, and it made me think of, this is not something where I'm trying to chase a check. It, it really mm -hmm. isn't. Lauren. I, I love sports with a passion. I'm, I'm probably somebody that yells at the damn TV as a fan all the time because I get really passionate. Now, mind you, you know, I don't be breaking stuff. I ain't that passionate. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I am a passionate person. I love my team. And I'm passionate about it, and I understand, you know. Um, I don't want to do this to chase a check. I want to do this because I love it. Like I told you, I worked overnight for the lottery, and I've had a lot of shit jobs. Um, <laughs> I can tell I'm with you, you. Right? I, I host this at a restaurant, and, like, it's so funny because it's, like, you know, what I put on social media is, like, working for Sports Illustrated, what you don't see behind the scenes is, like, me working – 10 hours to like hand people menus and clean up after 
assholes. You know what right. I mean? Things like that. Like you've right. got to be willing to do that, but like, it's so you've got to be able to support yourself, but like yeah. find the way to do that and tell what you love can do that is Absolutely. what I think. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because like you said, you doing a hostess job. I know I've done CBS where I've unloaded trucks at night. Uh, I've worked at Walmart where I've been in the dairy in 20 degrees, unloading milk. But this is all the things you got to do to support yourself to get to the dream that you want to get to. Um, right. and then before I before I go to the, uh, I want to tell you a quick story before I go to the next question. But I want to say to you is that you deserve your roast. And the reason why I say you deserve your roses, and yes, we, you're young in the game. You, you, you're, you're two years in, pretty much. But you deserve your roses because you work hard. Uh, these are people that entrusted you to cover these teams. Uh, there's a lot of other people that want your job because these jobs are, you know, they're very scarce. There's not a whole lot of jobs out there available. But people trust right. you to do your job. And then a lot of people see you in front of the camera. And they don't understand that the, the hard work that you put in behind the scenes. They see the glamour. They see the beautiful face in front of the camera reporting the sports. But they don't see what you do behind the scenes. I mean, I don't, I, I, this is my first interview I've done where I've seen somebody with a pen and, a, and just write. I have, not, I have not seen anybody else write during the interview. And I don't know what you write. You could be writing anything. Sorry, but, like <laughs> just literally taking notes. I, right, you're taking notes, right? So Yeah, things that stood out to me that you said. <laughs> right. So first thing that I've literally, that I've ever seen like that. So you definitely deserve your roses because you deserve where you are. And I know you're going to go very far because you work hard. And, you know, I, I just appreciate just the behind the scenes because I'm in college. And it's hard to it's hard to get content in college. It's hard to do yeah. stand ups in college. It's hard to write articles in college. I'm getting my ass handed to me by these editors talking about, well, why are you using this? AP style this, AP style that. I'm like, I'm sorry, my my bad. <laughs> I'll fix it. No problem. So I can just imagine how it is in the professional world. So just wanted to say that real quick. And then Thank before, you. I appreciate that. No problem. No problem. It's just the truth. No doubt about it. So um my first internship this is where i had my moment where i questioned myself my first internship was with um the knoxville ice bears it was a game day operations internship um i got it through uh, going to a career fair out here in the atlanta falcons career fair um the manager called me and said hey chris can you please come down to knoxville tennessee i saw your uh, resume uh you have a lot of customer service and we need, you know, you to come down and for the rest of the season, uh, because some Tennessee students, University of Tennessee students, wasn't returning, so he needed some help. Now, mind you, Lauren, I wasn't thinking, uh, but I was happy. I was excited he called because I was like, "Hell yeah, this is great! I'm, I'm about to be working in sports." So I said yes. Now, at the time, um, because I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, right now, I'm in my mid twenties. Because I actually started, it's, it's actually taking me a little while. So now, you know, I'm in my mid-20s now. But um, at that time, I was about 21. And I was like, okay, I'm taking this internship. And I was living at home. Uh, I had no car. And I just started my full-time job. This is my first full-time job I ever had, which is the same job I have now, but I'm at a different position. So long story short, um, I would take an Uber to the Marta station. I would go from uh, the mega bus, which I'm sure you probably know about. I took Atlanta mega bus all the way to Knoxville. I would take the Knoxville transit, pay for my hotel. I did this for three and a half months and every Friday and Saturday of every week that I would have my two days off at work, I would be in Knoxville, Tennessee, working the games from December to April. Now, mind you, during that time, I was in a hotel one day and I was thinking to myself, what the hell am I doing this for? Because this was unpaid, it was an unpaid internship. Uh, I needed a car because I had no car. So I was either walking or busting it. And then um, I, um, I was living in my mom's house and I really wanted my own place. And it was just like, oh, and I'm, I'm taking online classes. You know, I had started school. I had switched my major a couple of times. I was just up, up and down. But I told myself I never quit anything that I started. And I told myself that if I'm going to do this, I can't half-ass it. I got to do it all the way. 
and I ended up completing the internship. He gave me a great recommendation. Now, fast forward years later, I finally picked a major, which was journalism and emerging media with a professional writing minor. I do have my own place, which I'm in right now. I do have my own car, which is great. And now I'm gonna be graduating as a, uh, as a senior in July. Um, but it started from that moment because that moment was about, do I really wanna be in sports this bad? <laughs> do I really wanna do this? And it was just a game day operations, which taught me I didn't want to do game day operations, but it also- I have that job for the Blackhawks and the Chicago Fire. So like, I feel you, it's, you feel very close. You're like, I'm here, I'm in right. the building. Right. It's sports, but it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, a little different, right? So it taught me that and it taught me hard work, taught me dedication, but it also taught me that, listen, if I can put up with the stuff that I'm doing right now, this sports stuff I'm willing to do because obviously this is something that I love. And if I'm willing to do all this stuff that I don't love, it's going to make it, the transition a lot easier for me when I do break my foot into that door. And I'm just going to continue kicking that door down until the door, until I open it. And that's for sure. Um, but I wanted to tell you that story. Man, no, that's a good story. I like it. And you've got to do that. And I think that, uh, that's like, as I mentioned, this career weeds people out and, um, you've got, it's like the people who can do things like that. And I mean, I didn't go put myself up in a hotel, but it, it was a similar thing. Like we made say the Blackhawks paid us like 12 or 15 bucks an hour in Chicago, which is minimum wage. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have a car, so I would take an Uber and I would basically spend $40 round trip on Uber yeah. to get there to make $60 in a shift, you know, right, so it, right. and work for six hours. So, and do like manual labor and not even like in sports, but not what I wanted to do. Um, right. But all those things are still worth it. And like you said, you got a recommendation letter and like the networking and I've worked with, I have six professional sports teams and then a few colleges and and despite the capacity like from those opportunities like that's what you have to do because the only way at least the only way I've found success getting jobs is through reaching out to people like job boards are like fine for like a game day ops job you know like things yeah. like that yeah. Um, but in broadcasting or like at a larger network or with a team or things like that, like they, so many people just easy apply to those online that every time I've talked to somebody who like hires for something like that, they're like, we don't even look at that because we get 10,000 applications for a job because like, who doesn't, that job looks fun to everybody. Um, so they, it's really all about like who, you know, and who you've networked with. So like, no matter the capacity, like if you can get your foot in the door at any team and in any building, you know what I mean? Like those yeah, are all absolutely. super valuable. Yeah. So. That's, what's, that's what's up. I like that. And mind you, uh, that's probably one of my dream, uh, two of my, one of my two dream gigs is the one work for the Chicago Blackhawks, because that's where I was born and I love Chicago. Yeah. Um, I love Patrick Kane, love Jonathan Toes, love those players. Uh, and then other one is San Diego, because that's where I lived a lot of my life as well, to be with the Padres. So that's, that's two of my games. Now, yeah. the next two questions are kind of fun questions. So these questions okay. are about what is your favorite memory that you've done in the industry thus far and why? And you can have more than one. Oh, my gosh. This is like not even a specific, my favorite time of like any game, and this is like every game is like for all the jobs I've had, I've like been like on field, like at Fox Sports Detroit, I was like worked courtside, um, same with like the Tigers, I sat in the bullpen, things like that. My favorite part literally, and I think it's because I'm a girl, like when I, so when I worked at FSD and at Michigan, I was pretty much, there were like a couple cases where there would be like another woman working, but for the most part, it was just me like in the press box. Um, 
especially in baseball with like 50 old men. And besides being a girl, like I more pretty much always was the youngest person there. And um, like, I would have this moment every time, every single game, like whenever I was out on the field taking photos or like in the dugout and just like walking across the court and just like feeling all these eyes on me, um, which it, this sounds so weird, but like every time that would happen, like I always knew, first of all, people are like, you know, who's that person walking across the court? How do they oh, have yeah. that access? But um, I like kind of realized, I was like, why are people not staring at everybody else here? And I realized that more often than not, it was because I was like a 19 year old girl. And um, I feel like for me, that has been like, it's like the most empowering feeling, just kind of like being at it. Cause you work so hard yeah. and like not a lot of it gets seen which like is fine but when you're like in those moments like you know you've prepared for this game and you've done all this work and now you're at this game and you're there and you're like I deserve to be here and other people like like looking up and seeing thousands of thousands of people in the stands who would like kill Absolutely. to have your job and then you're there and you're like I'm here now I'm gonna enjoy this and I earned it that's right. like the best feeling that like that's like what keeps me going um it's like, I always look up and be like, ha ha, <laughs> like, <laughs> not, rub, not rub it in, but it's like, right. it's right. like, I worked so hard to be here. And like, it puts it into perspective, like yeah. how, how lucky we are and how hard it is to get there. Um, and other than that, oh God, like a favorite memory. You know, I traveled for both the big 10 tournaments, my junior and senior year, Ooh. um, big 10 basketball tournament. Yeah. And like, that's, I really want to cover college basketball, like, um, like March Madness and stuff. Like yeah, that. me um, too. That's like my dream, but the big 10 tournaments, um, I think probably my favorite besides just like being there, probably my favorite memory was at the tournament in New York. It was 2018, I think. Mm. Um, I was in the elevator going up to the press box and there was like one other guy, this old guy in the elevator. And I always look at people's credentials and see if I recognize their names, like super creepy. And I saw this guy is like Steve Kornacki. And I was like, oh, I know who that is. Like he writes for Michigan. He's a feature writer. Um, so I introduced myself and then he invited me up to his, he was in like a different press box. So he invited me up to his like VIP press box. Oh, wow. And I sat and watched the game with him and just like talked to him the whole game. And he used to work at Fox Sports Detroit. And um, so he put me in contact with somebody to like apply for my internship, which fun fact, I didn't get. <laughs> um, and after I got denied this internship, it came down to me and one other girl, her dad played for the Tigers, like she got it. I was so, so upset. <laughs> a week later, I got a call from um, a manager at FSD that offered me a job and was like, I saw you applied for the internship, but like, here's a job. And so that was like probably the best memory in the industry because it was like, I felt like so defeated. Yeah. And then, you know, got that opportunity, but like it, none of that would have even happened. Like, had I not That's made right. all the decisions prior. And right. like, I, I just think all my favorite memories are moments like that where it puts it into perspective. Like even when you don't feel like you're making progress, you see how far you've come. And Absolutely. I think you, you've got to like notice those things to keep going. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I do. And and I love the fact that um, what you were talking about, how you be that, that girl walking across the court or the field or, and to be honest with you, it took me back because there would be times that I would go to the games with sometimes my friends, um, and then sometimes, you know, when I was in town with my dad, even I can remember uh, a couple years ago, I went to a, it was a minor league baseball game. It wasn't even that important. It was the Rochester Red Wings because my dad was in upstate New York in Rochester, New York. And I looked and I saw, I saw a girl walking across the field and she had a credential, she had a camera, she had a, uh, she had a pad, she had a pen. And I said, damn, that looks cool as hell to do that. I don't even know what she was doing, but, but it looks cool. I want to do that. I'm like, I'll see myself doing something like that. You know, I don't care what it is. You know, it could be for 
South Dakota. It doesn't matter. I just want to be able to do something like that. So to see you talk about that took me back to that point because I would think, man, you know, that girl is, that girl, you're amazing to be out there on the court like that. And you're right because most of the people that you do see walking across the court are older gentlemen. People that's been in people that are veterans that's been in the game for a long time. You don't see a whole lot of young unless they're doing social media. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, something like that. You don't see a lot of reporters and journalists like yourself. So, or you know, and I, I think that's pretty cool. I would have said, damn, that's why. I would have. It's I like kind I, of self-centered, but it it's things like that that put it into perspective of like how many things you've had to overcome to get to that moment and be like that one person there. You know. It does um this is a, a great segue because now this question is about social life now mind you lauren um my social life is non-existent uh <laughs> you know I, I like i told you in the past i do have friends i do like to work hard i do like to play hard and prior pre-pandemic uh i would love going to house parties and bars and different things like that and i was a guy that loved doing different things and events around the city uh obviously now with the pandemic going on, it's pretty bad, but my social life was also pretty uh, up and down as well. Cause it was kind of like, I would go to that, but then it'd be, a, it'd be like two, three weeks or, or even a month or so, I couldn't do it. And dating life, woo, <laughs> dating life has been hard. <laughs> it's just been hard nonetheless. So I say that because, you know, obviously with the jobs that, you know, you have, and then with the stuff that I have on my plate, you know, it's hard for somebody to understand what we're going through unless they're actually going through. It. So how difficult has it been for you to try to generate a social life, uh, a dating life outside of sports and, you know, be able to you know, maintain the balance? Because for me, it's been it's been hella difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um in college, I didn't struggle too much because I just like didn't really sleep. I don't honestly don't know how I did it. I think I made up hours in the day. Um, but since, <laughs> but since then, um, I feel the same way. I um, I've found like especially since I've graduated now that I've relied on like a smaller group of like yes. just my inner circle. And as I've started to like gain traction in my career, I felt like it's been very important for me to do that. Um, so like, I, I don't know how to say this. Like I have my best friends and I don't want to say that's it. Like I have my best friends and then acquaintances. Like I don't really oh, yeah. half-ass relationships with like some people. Um, and I found that like, especially recently on um, like how important that is because yeah. like you have to have people you can rely on. Like I do, like I socialize, but more often than not, I'm like, I honestly got a dog and was like, this is the best decision for me. Cause now I don't have to explain to people why I'm not going to stay out until 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm right, going to go right, home. Right. Um, but but it is hard. Like, like you said, like I, um, watch my roommate and like my friends, um, go out like three nights in a weekend and then do wine night and then watch the bachelor and like do all these things. And I will like pick maybe one day out of the week, every two or three weeks. Right. Um, so I for sure feel that. And I think that the biggest, like when it comes to friendships, um, the greatest thing I did is like, I found one of my best friends, Jenna, um, we didn't become friends until like August. Um, but she is a reporter. We work together. We cover Michigan basketball together and it's been the best thing for me because like you said, people don't really understand, like I'm working on my computer editing something until 1am Yeah. and people are like, why well, can't just meet us out after. And I'm like, dude, by the time I'm done with this, like my eyes are done. Okay. I'm done. Yeah. Um, but like, that was, I think finding Jenna has been like one of the best things for me because we understand it. And like, we work together and like, even right now, like 
she's texting me. She's like watching one of my videos. And like, that is our friendship is working together, but it's like, it kills two birds with one stone. It does. Um, it does. But it's like, when you're always working, if you find someone else who's always working and doing, you know, something similar and you can help each other, it's right. like, we've, we've become so, so close. Cause we both understand what we're going through and how difficult and stressful it is, but then we're, we can also help each other. But then it's also like, when we hang out, we don't have to necessarily not be working <laughs> like right, we, right. we hang out normally too but like we'll be like oh like you have to work this weekend yeah me too okay do you want to just sit together and edit these videos um so I think you're really lucky if you can find somebody like that in your career okay. um because it gets lonely for sure in terms of dating I I do feel I mean I honestly feel like I'm too busy like I'm at a point where I'm just like not even really interested in dating right now because I'm you and so me both. focused on myself but um I I do feel the same way um my I've found to like I've become a lot more cautious and especially as like a talent I think it's just really important to kind of like like keep your guard up. But I've also noticed like when I see people the same way I see friends, I just, I struggle because, and I don't know how to say this without sounding like conceited, but I struggle when I um, like being like attracted to as a friend or like in terms of dating to people who aren't as like inspired and passionate about what they're doing as I am about what I'm doing because I'm yeah. like if you're not like doing your own thing then like this just isn't gonna work because right. I'm busy all the time so like you should be doing your own like your I'm own not. thing too it is I'm still figuring it out so if you figure out the answer let me know but I ha do agree with you that it's easiest to have relationships that are like within like the industry kind of because people get it. And if you're outside, you just don't get it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's why I kind of asked the question because, you know, um, as I've stated, as I've stated before, it's, it's really non-existent as far as, you know, because friends, yeah, my friends are good, but they, they're not really passionate about sports like I am. So it's cool to have people to talk to like that. And you brought up a great word, which was acquaintances. You have a lot of acquaintances and people that you know of, but my definition of friend is somebody that I can go to and rely on and trust. And you don't just give trust out. That's not something I, I don't give it out. That's for sure. Because like you said, it's a cautious life that you got to live and you have to be careful with people that you want to implement into your life. And I've always been like that. I've had to cut off a couple of people because the other things they were doing, it's not conducive or it's not uh, 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 positive. For me in my life mm -hmm. and i've had to make those kind of decisions uh as far as the dating life goes yeah i totally agree i i don't even want some people saying the word date to me right now i mean i'm so focused with the classes i don't want to i don't want to do anything as far as dating like that and i love to go out mind you i'm a people person but i'm so focused on graduating and i'm so focused with gaining knowledge from my peers and talking to them and building connections and learning from them that anybody that's not super sports fanatic like myself is like you're foreign to me like and like you said you're foreign to me for one and then two if you ain't a go-getter like me i told you my schedule my schedule is like that if you're not a go-getter like me it's not gonna work because i'm gonna be like what are you doing <laughs> like what are you doing and, and how how can we elevate each other because that's what you want in a partner that's what you want in friends you want friends to keep you accountable you want friends to elevate you and motivate you and that's the kind of people I want to be around me and I feel like likewise people do that the best and I think you explained that very well so I'm very happy that you gave your explanation that's great <laughs> um this next question is about interviews okay so, I have a love-hate relationship with teamwork online, okay? And work in sports and other sites because I feel like when I get my cover letter together, my resume together, I send it off for a job posting. I feel like I'm sending it off to space because I don't know who to the To a black hell. hole, yeah. No doubt. So uh, I say that to say this. What is the best way for a person to get interviews with companies? Is it 
going online and filling out those applications, or is it emailing producers, directors at certain uh, stations, uh, emailing your resume in, or is it talking with talented professionals like yourself, building a connection? All three. Um, hmm. I would never do any alone, though. Um, I used to do the same thing, like teamwork online, all that. It's a black hole. Um, but what you need to do is go to, if you see it, like teamwork online, the reason it's good is because if something's open, then you'll be able to like know that there's an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. um, I've recently even started asking people like without even seeing a posting. Um, but the way I've found the most success for finding jobs is go to if it's like with a team go to the director whatever you can go to their front office directory um email them directly um mm -hmm. i haven't like done anything with like a station really just other than like sports networks um like i haven't done like local news or anything like that um but my friends who have it's the same thing it's like go never just put your apply online because like I said like there's tens of thousands and whatever yeah. people applying to that um so what I always do now is if I see a job or if I just want a job um I'll find out who the hiring manager would be I'll reach out to them directly mm -hmm. or actually what I'll do is so I'll find out who the manager is and then I'll find them on LinkedIn or social media see if I have any mutual friends with them if I do, I reach out to that person asking them like, hey, you know, I saw you know that so-and-so, I'm trying to ask if they have a job. Um, they've almost always, actually, they've always been willing to do that for me. Okay. Um, then I'll reach out directly to either have that person connect me or reach out directly to them via email and go from there. Um, and even if you're saying like, I saw this on teamwork online, but you know, wanted to reach out directly and so-and-so referred me like right, that's right. I, in my opinion, like the only way to do it, the only way I've found success. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you know, the semester just, you know, we're, we're in week two of the semester here and teachers, you know, I've asked that question to teachers as well. And, you know, teachers be like, well, you know, sometimes it's not about just what, uh, the posting that you apply to, you know, sometimes it's just not about what you get, it's about who you know. Um, sometimes it's about, you know, just uh, um, just being able at the right place at the right time. And I'm like, okay, that's so cliche, but but I guess it's true. I have to take your word for it, ma'am. Yeah. I get it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I want to ask you a follow-up question to this. When is it too much? When is too much too much? And when I say that is when you email somebody, because I do three emails. I'm a person that does an email. I'll wait about a week. I'll send a follow-up email. I wait about maybe two, three weeks. Then I'll send about a third email in a, in a yeah. two-month span. Now, if you don't reply to those three emails in a two-month span, I'm thinking, well, either you don't have anything or you just ain't interested in what I'm selling. Now, when do you think it's too much? Because some people are very persistent <laughs> to the point where they get on yeah. some damn nerves. When do you think it's too much? I feel like uh, that's a good question. It depends on the person. Um, if it's a couple and they still haven't responded, like, oh, that's, I feel like a few follow-ups are definitely okay. Okay. Um, some like try to space it out like if you do a couple follow-ups and then like you know you see something new like that's something I always do like if someone hasn't responded and then I follow up after a week and they still haven't responded but then say two months from them I see that their like reporter moved to a new state you know it's like reach back out right. um at the end of the day they're not gonna like go tell people that you're so annoying and blacklist you in the industry for like right. emailing them too much I've always found the response to be more like wow that person really wants to work here or like they're more ambitious is is the way I think people tend to lead um luckily so I wouldn't worry too much too too much about that okay okay now 
I asked you about your favorite memory. Now I'm going to ask you about what is an event that you would like to cover, but you simply haven't yet, and why? And it can be more than one event. Um, the NBA All Star Game. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be so fun. Um, hey, yeah, I love I love like the entertainment stuff too. So yeah. I think that's like a there's nothing else like it i mean yeah for sure that's my number one uh my number one is the nba all-star game for real and then number two would be um super bowl and that's because of my dad because i told him um, i told him sitting at the uh like uh last time i went up there for christmas this uh past year and i told him i said dad you know i'm gonna be graduating in july and i said he said that's good son i said one of these days i'm gonna be a sports reporter journalist or network or publication, I promise you, I'm gonna take you to the Super Bowl. And he <laughs> said, he said, son, you crazy as hell. What are you talking about? <laughs> take you to the Super Bowl. I said, yeah, that's my goal. We watched many Super Bowls together as I was a kid growing up. You've always said you wanted to go, uh, and that's my goal for you. I'm gonna do everything in my power to get to the Super Bowl and take you with me. So that's a sentimental that's thing awesome. for me because that's what I want to do for my dad. So that's why it's number. So that's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. I have two more questions. And then okay. after that, you are, you, you've been absolutely terrific. You've been great. You've been awesome. Thanks. Um, All right, hit me. So <laughs> uh, this next question is about moving around. Um, is, do you think it is best for you to move around for your career to ascend? Or is it better for you to stay put in a city and continue to just ascend there? That's a really good question. Um, I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of doing that right now. Um, so like I started and this this is the advice I've been given and I'm starting to see it pay off. Um, is like, for example, like I started at Michigan and at Fox, but like there comes a point where you're no longer growing there and the mar either the market's too small or it's too either the market's too small for you to keep growing or it's too large for you to get a position where you'll continue to grow. So that's like kind of what I did, which is weird. It's like I was in Detroit, it's not a huge, huge market, but it's a it's a larger market. Um it's like top ten, top ten, thirteen, I forget. Um mm. but anyway, so like my job here. I felt like at Michigan and at FSD, I learned everything that I kind of was, was going to get there. Um, yeah. And that was a really hard decision for me because I wanted to climb the ranks at Fox in Detroit um, and like be their reporter. Um, however, I realized the job I had at FSD wasn't going to get me to be like the next reporter. Um, so I, and this is actually what my manager, I'm super close with her at Fox told me to do. Cause I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, and then I got, I applied for and got this production job in Chicago. Right. Uh, that was an internship. So I left a job at Fox sports Detroit for a production internship on a talk show in Chicago, which wow. was like, felt like I was downgrading but like you can't I didn't look at it like that I looked at it as like now I'm going to learn all these new things in production that I haven't learned before absolutely um so anyways to circle back to the advice I've been given is like if you want to because I ultimately want to I think move back like I would love to come back and um be at Fox Sports Detroit again but like you become so much more valuable to a company if you leave and then come back because now you've learned new skills um, from other places that you hadn't, that they weren't able to provide you with. Um, and you become much more marketable. I personally, like I'm a homebody. I love my family and being relatively close to home. So like, yeah. I want to stay more like in the Midwest, like kind of South a little bit is fine, but like not West coast, not like New York. Um, and I found that to be like very helpful because I feel like the name that I've built for myself has like, I've worked in Michigan and Chicago, and then I do work in Indiana and I've done some stuff in Ohio. So like, well, you've been I all think around. That, yeah, like you're building a network, but like definitely to have it in a region, 
um, rather than be like spread too thin is powerful because people within the region, like that's who talks like the higher ups, you know, and like, that's how you'll get notice. Um, so I think it's both. Like, I think like you could stay, stay in one place. Um, but I wouldn't have that place be a small town where you can't grow. And then right. once you outgrow a city, move, but then know that once you move and learn new things, then you are so much more marketable to like go back. So I kind of think you have to move around. I don't know, like you don't have to move cross country, but um, having those experiences, like now I can come back to Detroit and be like, look, I covered sports in Chicago and like, they've got way more going on than us, you know? Yeah. Um, it definitely makes you more marketable for sure. No, I like that. I really do. I, I ask that question a lot because, you know, as I told you, um, I started talking to, you know, talented professionals like yourself. And what I wanted to do was not, at first I was talking to just writers because that's what I do. I'm strong at writing. I'm strong at writing recaps and different things like that and features and stuff like that. But I wanted to start talking to not just writers. I wanted to start talking to reporters, anchors, digital hosts. Uh, producers, directors, um, people that um, work via home, uh, people that go to games, uh, people that's in different cities like you, Michigan, people in cities I could see myself living in. Uh, obviously, I could live in Chicago. I love that. Obviously, I could live in Michigan. I started talking to people all across the globe because you can't just set your sights on one place. You got to be able to be adapt. So that's why I wanted to ask that question because also, my teachers have uh, drilled home, uh, especially this past like fall and now the spring that, you know, you guys, you, you're going to have to start off in a small market. You, you know, you might not ever get to the big market. And I'm like, excuse me, sir. Um, I understand <laughs> what you're saying, but I'm not going to put limitations on myself. Uh, I want to be in the big market and I want to be the absolute best. Now, I understand I might have to start there, but I'm not going to just never say never. I want to be the absolute best that I can be. If it's that in the small market, okay. If it's in the big market, that's okay. But I'm going to continue knocking down doors and busting windows until somebody allows me to continue to progress. Because like you said, in this business, the worst thing you can get is stale. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing you can get. And if you get stale and you get um, comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. somebody's going to come around and take your job. And uh, that's the one thing that I, I have in my mindset is I never want to be comfortable and I never want to stop learning. And that's just, that's just how I am naturally. So uh, good. You, you've got to be <laughs> right. So last question is what advice was given to you or what advice have you given someone that is um, in the sports and media industry uh, field that you remember? I don't even know like I think it was Laura Oakman when I was in Atlanta told me this the whole thing was like little victories uh like celebrate little victories and that's probably the thing I repeat to myself the most um like as advice but like as a mantra like in this job like there are um like you get stuck and you feel like you're not growing, but you are, you know, or you, you nailed something, but something else sucked. Like, for example, the other night when I was saying I had a tough game, like I struggled through my pregame report and then like struggled through, every, like I struggled through talking and was so mad at myself. But then like, luckily I was with my friend Jenna and she knows that this is what I say. And she's like, Lauren, like you literally talked like, I had just had a session with my talent coach and she gave me like all these like notes, like change your voice, change the, what you're saying, you know, and analyze this, like do this and this and this. And um, like, I couldn't speak, like I couldn't be on camera. I sucked. But then Jenna was like, Lauren, like you literally did like, you know, you included this in your analysis. Like you like just remembered like 50 stats. Like you just, right. you know, and it's right. things like that where it's like, okay, yeah, your report sucked, but you've had a million, you know, fine ones. But, you know, today you did something you've never done before. And like, that's a little victory, even though it wasn't the whole thing. Hmm. And you've got to like find those things and notice them because like progress is hard to see in the short term, <laughs> especially if you're being frustrated and you're in a funk. Um, and like, Absolutely. I had the same thing last night. Like, 
yesterday I was like kind of dreading going to the game because I was like last game I had a hard time and uh luckily changed my mindset before I got there and like I left yesterday and was like I had so much fun today reminded me why I love this job and like that's Absolutely. a little victory so I think that's that's the advice like especially here where a lot of the, you're not going to get a lot of praise from, from other people. You have to give it to yourself. So you have to learn how to recognize those things when you're doing something really well and give yourself credit. Like you have to give yourself credit for how hard you're working. And if you're just so focused on working hard, like you and I both are, then you don't, at least I don't always stop to be like, good job. Or, right. or, but right. but that's, that's the advice uh, that I was given and that I, that I hold true. That's really? pretty cool. I like that. Celebrate little victories. I definitely would write that yeah. one down. Um, I think the one that I got the most that, that really resonates with me is uh, be confident, but be teachable. Mm -hmm. Someone told me that, a mentor of mine, he told me that. He said, you want to be confident in anything that you do, but you want to be teachable. And, you know, this is, it, it just gets, it reminds me of talking to people like yourself of how humble I should be because um, you doing it and you doing it with a smile and you doing it with, uh, <laughs> with, with, with such love and such affection for what you're doing. And it's, it's not only just a helpful to talk to you, it's helpful to see your story, helpful to hear some of the advice you've gotten and some of the things that you went through and experienced, but it's also inspiring because many people talk to you. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that does. I'm sure that everybody that talks to you uh, walks away saying, wow, this, this woman is really, really something. And this woman is really a pleasure to talk to. And it, it just truly is. I, and this is why I love doing what I do. And I love connecting with people all around. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. This has been great. Do you have any other questions? No, I actually, I don't. Uh, the one thing I was going to do is I was going to say, um, I, I, I like the bear in the background. I really do. Um, I think oh yeah i met my parent he's eight feet tall oh i'm oh, like my. oh whoa. my eight foot polar bear yeah <laughs> like a i didn't know he was that big but that's cool that's pretty cool um I you know <laughs> i'm like i'm out of my apartment i'm kind of a kid still uh right. but yeah that's willie that's oh. Willie. I bought him freshman year of college, kind of as a joke online, and he arrived at my parents' house, and so my mom says I got to keep him in my room. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Well, hi, Willie. Because nice to he's too big. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I want to uh, say that I'm following you on Twitter. I'm following you on Instagram and LinkedIn. I hope you can follow me back if you want to. You don't have to, but if yeah, you want of course. to, I throw that back. Uh, I'll be following you on LinkedIn as well. Um, I also want to send you some uh, of my stuff. Eventually, uh, we're going to be doing some reels, some stand-ups in my news production class. Uh, I'm also going to be writing. I have a couple articles dropping in my magazine, and I'm going to be covering basketball. I'll send you that stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, I definitely want to keep in touch with you because you seem just absolutely sweet. I will probably send <laughs> you... Um, uh, my contact information be in style. And then after that, uh, other than that, um, I don't have any other questions. It's just been an absolute pleasure. Oh, this I will say. If yeah. you, since I'm graduating in July, I don't know if you'll uh, hear of anything or see of anything, because I'm going to be going on the postings like crazy and, and just, you know, doing that. But if you hear of anything in Michigan, Chicago, or wherever you are uh, going to be uh, doing your thing at, and you hear it before it gets posted, I would love a shout out. Um, and then that'd be cool if you can do that. Yeah, I'll for sure keep you in mind if I hear anything remote or just anywhere through the grapevine, um, I'll send it your way and try to connect you. And similarly, if you like see something and if you think I'm a mutual connection, then I'm always happy to, to try to help you out there whenever I can. Well, I appreciate that, Lauren. Um, like I said, you've been absolutely wonderful. Uh, and I have nothing else to say. You enjoy the rest <laughs> of your Wednesday night. You and Willie, both of y'all. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Go enjoy your apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I might have to buy some tomorrow. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, please do. Hit me up. Take care, okay? All right. Thanks, Chris. Have a good night. Bye.